it's been a while. I realized WrestleMania was almost a full week ago, but Sunday night, midway through the show, I started feeling real, so I started feeling some type of way, and come to find out Monday, I had like pneumonia or some shit, so yeah, this is like, and then my voice was gone, and it's coming back slowly but surely, but I said, I don't care if it's, you know, September when I can talk again. I got to do a WrestleMania 30 review. So, here we are. <clears throat> just just going to go with it. Before I start, 100% condolences to the Ultimate Warrior, his family. Oh, man. Uh, you know, a couple days ago when it happened, I was still out down for the count. And I saw that news pop up on my phone. And I just I was like, there's no way. So I'm Saturday, Sunday, Monday. it's just crazy how stuff works. So just wanted to, you know, give a little shout out to him before we get into the video. Sad, sad stuff, man. Um, still can't quite digest that it happened. That is how quick stuff can happen sometimes. But let's get let's get into it. The pre-show started off. We had the Usos, Los Matadores, Real Americans, and Rybaxel. Um, which this ended up becoming an elimination tag match, which made it better in my opinion because I just, of course it's going to be better. Um, I feel like this match to me didn't really pick up until it was just down to the Usos and the Real Americans. Um, Usos get the win. I thought it was really cool. Um, the part of the match where, you know, they're, they're doing their standoff and they're, we, the people, and then ooze. Oh, like with the crowd, it, was, it sounded really cool. Um, so yeah, serviceable match to start off with. Nothing too wrong with it. The Usos get the win, like I said. Jack Swagger goes to put um, Cesaro in the Patriot Lock. He gets out of that, and they're you know it looks like they're gonna be buddy buddy. No sir. Boom. Gets uh, the swing going, and that was that. Good stuff. The WrestleMania 30 card started off. Oh, man. Hulk Hogan coming out. He's the host. Thinks he's at the Silver Dome still. I mean, to each their own. You know what I'm saying? Um, he goes on for a while. The crowd was giving him some crap. It was funny. Um, he's talking about, you never know when the next WrestleMania moment's going to happen. Boom. Stone Cold Steve Austin. I kind of got the Stone Cold voice right now because I can't talk worth shit. But he comes out, you know, he's if you want me to open up a can of whoop ass on Hulk Hogan, give me a hell yeah. Hulk Hogan's probably like, These, this crowd loved me a second ago. What the hell happened? Um, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. So they, you know, they go on their little thing. It was cool to see those two together. And then I lost my mind because the Rock's music hit. Comes out, does his normal thing. I really like this because... A, it's the three biggest dudes ever in the same place, same time. So just visually, it's really cool. B, they took guys that you knew were going to be there, like Stone Cold and The Rock. They announced it and made them surprising because you're not thinking they're going to kick it off, you know. Still was awesome. Great way to set the tone. One of the better openings to a WrestleMania. I mean, just... To get you hyped, make it feel like, oh, this is a big, big deal. Uh, first match. And <coughs> God, it hurts the cough so bad. But, um, yes, first match. Basically, the only thing they could have rolled out there directly after this, because you don't want to go, Ooh. so you had to keep the high going. Daniel Bryan versus Triple H. I absolutely love uh, the video package that was leading into this show and the Daniel Bryan's, you know, sort of rise to WWE. They used the Imagine Dragon song, Monster, which is a great song. Um, so it was off to a good thing. Triple H's entrance. It's my boy. That was a badass entrance. Um, so this match, this match was really good. Like, I mean, I know it was going to be really good, but 
you know, sometimes you're like, Ugh, you're kind of nervous. It's kind of hit expectations. It did. It was awesome. Daniel Bryan's doing all sorts of stuff. Triple H totally like changed his whole style up for this match for the most part. Um, he was doing all sorts of different stuff. It was really cool to see. There were some parts where literally I'm like, I think Triple H has him. You know, he hit a couple pedigrees or whatever, or he was setting him up, and it just felt like, oh, this is this is really it. This is, the crowd is going to go ballistic and be so pissed. Uh, ends up happening. Knee to the grill. One, two, three. Daniel Bryan will move on to the main event of WrestleMania. Um, Triple H goes buck-ass wild afterwards. Stephanie slapping Daniel Bryan. Triple H comes in and beats the crap out of him. Nothing wrong with that. Got to build the suspense. Um, and they leave him laying there. Next match was the Shield versus Kane and the Outlaws. This match literally went like three minutes long. And I was okay with it because the Shield came in, had those sick masks, whooped some ass, and got out of there. What more do you need? You know what I'm saying? Um, so I was totally cool with it. Then you get the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which ended up actually having 31 guys, which the more, the more the merrier, I guess. Um, and a big surprise here, didn't even know he was going to be in it, Cesaro wins the uh, Battle Royal impressively, picking up the big show and just straight tossing him. Awesome thing to see. Got the crowd super hyped because of the guy who won and, you know, the fashion he did it in. It was pick up the big show. That was that was awesome stuff. Um, really, I best scenario that I think they could have gone with personally. It came down to, like, who were, I don't know, Kofi had a cool spot. It was down to, like, Cesaro, big show, Sheamus, Del Rio, Dolph were towards the end. If I'm forgetting somebody, then my bad. But um, it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I'll put it that way. Uh, when it got down to the last couple dudes, it was it was pretty cool back and forth. Then we get and see at this point the show is just bumbling, bumbling, stumbling on its way to a really good ass show. Did it did it keep going there? We'll, we'll find out. John Cena versus Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt um had the band playing his. You know, his entrance, which was creepy as shit. Really cool. Um, Cena, I don't have time for bullshit entrances. I'm just here to fight. You know what I'm saying? So he comes out. This, again, this match was really good. He had that creepy thing where Cena's going for the final or something. Bray Wyatt pops up. I'm like, okay. Bray Wyatt is scary as shit. But like, I really like this match. This is one of John Cena's better WrestleMania matches that I've seen. Um, and it's also one of Bray Wyatt's most frustrating, but yeah, um, but it, but it had to happen. You kept, oh, the story was so perfect. Oh man. The story was so perfect in this match. Bray Wyatt just trying to get John Cena to the corrupt and turn. And there was, John Cena did such a good job of it. Cause you're like, he's really having an internal struggle right now. He wants to snap, but he just it won't let himself. He was doing such a good job of that. And, oh, I would have loved this match so much if just John Cena just one time just snaps, hits Bray Wyatt with the chair, gets DQ'd, you know, and just goes ballistic on Bray Wyatt for like a while and then kind of realizes what he's doing and then feels bad afterwards. But, oh, couldn't happen. John Cena just had to hit the AA. One, two, three on Bray Wyatt. You know, I was I was pretty pissed, but the good thing about, you know, um, reviewing this so far down is I, on Raw, clearly the crowd didn't give a shit because they were all aboard the Wyatt train. So that's it's good to know that Bray Wyatt is going to be okay with this. He's not going to pull a sand out. But. It was a really good match. just had so much potential to be more, but it happens. Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. Now, it's 
one of those things where I can't go all the way and say I told you so because I didn't. I still picked the Undertaker. But if you watched the preview and the predictions, I gave you all the reasons. I said it just feels like one of those things where it's like, why would they put a match like this on the card that seems like there's you know there's no point to it. There's nothing. Da, 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 da. And I said this is for the first time. All the people like us on the internet are sitting here saying, all right, well, we're, we're like planning out this dude's future. Okay, so he wins here. Then for 23 and 0, he fights Bray Wyatt, Sting, and John Cena. And we're just like nonchalantly just throwing shit out like, oh, yeah, well, uh, duh, 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 duh. And then he does whatever. And then he does it. Like, dude's like 50 something. Like, you can't just be throwing shit out like that. And I just kept, I had the, I just kept having the weirdest feeling. And if you watch, if you don't believe me, go back and watch the preview. It gets to the point where I'm about to pick Brock Lesnar. I'm like, uh, I can't do it. But I had given every reason why, and it's right there. Um, this is a little bit before. This is when I started feeling sick on Sunday. But oh my god, when that three hit, it was just, I just sat up and just kind of looked at it like. It's one of those things where, like, you just don't know how to handle it because you didn't think you'd ever see it. Like, even me saying it was a it was a possibility didn't, you know, didn't really think it was likely. It was just like, I was like, oh, I could see them giving it to Brock here just because I'm getting a weird vibe. And still, oh, man. See, the problem for me is <laughs> you guys know I love The Undertaker. He's my second favorite wrestler of all time behind The Rock. But third is Brock Lesnar. You guys also know that. (laughs) So for me, I was like, I was kind of happy about it. I was like, and I totally, totally, totally understand everyone's, you know, oh, it doesn't make sense because Brock Lesnar's this, and it's, you know, 20 years build up, and it's all gone, piss poured out. I I feel you, but you should know this by now. Me, I just kind of like to be a fan. I don't try to think about the business application. Well, you could have given it to a young guy, and it would have made him. It's not always the case. Same thing with why I wasn't super pissed off that Bray Wyatt didn't beat John Cena. You know who got a big-ass win at last year's WrestleMania? Fandango. Does anybody give a shit a year later? No. No one fucking cares. About, you know, Fandango, and everyone's like, oh, well, Bray Wyatt, he's going to get forgotten because he didn't beat John Cena. It doesn't, like, people forget so quick. Like, if you like a guy, you're going to still like him. Like, come on. But my only problem was that the match just wasn't that good. Oh, it would have, I'd have been 100% on board if it was a good match. And I still, I'm totally cool with it. I love Brock Lesnar. If literally, if there's a dude to do it, it's Brock Lesnar from a believability standpoint. Which brings me to... Now, I understand. People are going to get so pissed for me at saying that. Pissed at me for saying this. But I never gave a shit before. Or am I going to start now? Think about this. The two biggest complaints I heard on Twitter, you know, different people's videos, comments. I'm just not looking forward to this match because... So it's literally the most predictable match in the history of WrestleMania. There is 0% chance that Brock Lesnar is going to win this match. Number two. This is my favorite one. Because I'm not going to name names, but these are the same exact people that are complaining the shit out of the fact that he lost. So already, well, some, you, you asked for unpredictability and you said that this is the most predictable match in the history of whatever. And the other one. If Triple H is really ushering in the reality era, don't give me Facebook notifications, you son of a bitch. Um, sorry. If this is really the reality era, uh, do we really supposed to believe? Because this is this is this is when you know Undertaker is winning. There's no chance for Brock Lesnar. Are we really supposed to believe that this fifty-something year old dude is going to beat Brock Lesnar, a UFC champion? Surprise, motherfuckers! He didn't. Brock Lesnar won. I will forever 
and be okay with it. I am 100% okay with it. Love the Undertaker. He, he, he made the call. You know, that doesn't necessarily make it the right call, but it's a call that I'm okay with. And it's a moment that I've watched a whole lot. Just, oh, the crowd's face. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's one of my favorite things in sports is watching, you know, crowds' faces after a loss. And, God, you put that into a wrestling crowd, whoo, it was good shit. But, of course, I was initially just shocked and a little taken back. But I'm cool with it, guys. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, then we get the, oh, God, poor Divas. Divas had to follow this. You know, the 14 Diva, I felt so bad. They didn't deserve this. AJ Lee ends up winning it, though, so that's good. Um, oh, the other good thing about Brock Taker is right when uh, Brock won, I knew for a fact not a single person is going to get 100% now, and I'm not going to have to buy anybody shit off WWE Shop for the contest I did on the predictions. So I was like, genius, save myself 30 bucks. Um but anyways, yeah, AJ wins. It was it was not a bad match at all. It just got put in a really shitty situation. Um, main event, Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, Batista. Oh, before, sorry, it was um, Piper, Orndorff, Mr. T, and Hogan had a backstage thing about, you know, the main event of WrestleMania once. Oh, that was cool to see. All right, and then the main event, my boy Randall. Gets played out by the boys. Uh, Batista comes out. Brian wins. Brian's, you know, for now, selling his injuries really well. For now. Um, he got off to a quick start. He starts beating on both of them, trying to get the upper hand. He was hurt, so he kind of had to jump on it quick. Um, I really liked this match. Uh, there were a lot of cool spots. It, it worked for a triple threat match, and I was – I wouldn't say I was worried because of the competitors. I was just worried because of, you know, the history of triple threat matches. But I feel like it was the right dudes to have in there. You have Brian, the really technical guy. Orton's a good in-ring. Like, he, I like his in-ring style. And he's just a big-ass dude that's going to just beat people up. Um, so, yeah, I, I really liked it. There's a lot of cool spots where – Obviously, the Batista bomb into an arc, a like backwards RKO through the table. Um, and there were a lot of false finishes where, not to the point where it became like overly apparent, like, oh my gosh, really? This many false finishes? But it was enough where you're like, okay. And it, it, it works better with three guys because everyone can get hit with stuff. So it doesn't seem like it's complete overload. Um, but, oh, the part where I really thought it was over. Uh, as Batista went to spear Orton, he moved, he hit Brian. They got caught with an RKO. I totally thought Orton won there. I was, I was already said, but no, nah. no, no dice. But Daniel Bryan gets carried out on the stretcher after the Batista thing. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, let's see here. Daniel Bryan is going to get carried away on a stretcher. And as he starts getting off said stretcher, I said, huh, now I understand this, what they're doing, but my good friends on the internet, if this was John Cena or Randy Orton, we would be having a complete come apart. Oh my God, Super Cena. He's on a stretcher. You can't be okay that fast. But when it's Daniel Bryan, oh, it's heart and determination. Determination. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. And I'm sitting there thinking, this is Super Bryan return. It's like, what the hell is going on here? He goes back. He gets back in there. He's totally fine. Five seconds later, I'm like, oof. Sell that shit. You're the man, Super Daniel. You are breakfast clubbing right now. Just, um... God, the hypocrisy of things. But it's okay. Um, so he goes in there. They go for a little bit longer. It was pretty cool. Uh, they, And then right when he comes back in from the stretcher, gets his ass thrown into the steps by Randy Orton. I said, um, but 
we, let's see, we end up getting, I don't remember the exact finish. I know that Orton gets hit, but I don't remember if it was by a, I think, might have just been a Batista bomb. Might have just been a Batista bomb, because I don't think Brian hit both of them. But anyways, Orton's out of the picture. Boom, running knee on Batista, there we go. And then he puts him in the yes lock. Batista taps out. Hmm, do you all hate Batista so much now? Fucking tapped out for Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 30. Um, crowd goes bonkers. It was a really cool moment to see. Never going to deny that. You all know my thoughts on Daniel Bryan. Now I will say, like I said, at the beginning of the show, the, the video package where it's seeing his rise – and all the stuff, and watching Road to WrestleMania, Daniel Bryan, totally <laughs> respect the guy, totally thinks he deserves it. I have no problem with him winning, 100% okay with it. You know, he's still not my guy by any means, but I get it. It was the right thing to do. I'm totally for it. You know, the Raw was really cool. The crowd here was unreal. It was, it, he deserved it. It was, the fans deserved it, you know. You guys put up with some shit for eight months. You you guys did. You put up with some shit. So, and some of you didn't handle it the most grown-up way, but it's okay. Um, like I said, it was a cool moment. Totally worth happening. I'm so down with it. Dale Bryan, you know, he's a cool guy. But can I... Oof. But am I so excited... For that day, after he gets done with Triple H, and after he gets done with Orton, and after he gets done with Batista, am I looking forward so much to the day where that those two titles get taken from him by my boy Brock Lesnar? You bet your ass I can't wait for that. So enjoy it. Enjoy it for now, because Brock is coming. It's my prediction. Um, but anyways, like I said, this is really, really late. I'm so sorry. I literally couldn't talk until today, and I clearly still am having issues. Um, so that's that's that. Leave your comments below. Subscribe, like this video. Let me know what you thought down below. Pretty sure I can gauge what everyone thought of this, but I'd still like to know. So let me know down there. And I'm going <laughs> to go back to not talking for a while. So goodbye. John Cena style. Never John Cena.